Okay. All right, welcome everybody. We're going to talk about uh, ligamentous and tendinous injuries, injuries about the ankle today. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to interrupt me anytime. So the ankle joint's made up of a mortise. So here, this is a mortise. Um, I don't know, if does anybody here do carpentry work? Do you? So, uh, so Jim, you see how it fits perfectly. One piece fits perfectly into the other. And the ankle joint's the same exact thing. It's a mortise. Uh, and in my review of, um, I, reviewed the, I reviewed the Academy lecture from uh, San Francisco, and um, there was one article where during stance phase of the uh, stance phase of the gait, that they put stress um, transducers into the ligaments, and there's little stress in a normal ankle. And most of the stress is taken up by the um, bones. So, and it makes sense, because it's, it's such a closely opposed uh, uh, joint. And here's a, f a top view of the talus, and this is uh, looking up into the ankle. Here's the medial malleolus, the, the fibula. So it fits uh, snugly and perfectly. So what are the ligaments about the ankle? Medially, there's a really strong deltoid ligament. Um, goes from the tibia to the talus and calcaneus. And then if you look on the inside, there's the spring ligament which is very important, the plantar calcaneal navicular ligament, and this keeps our foot. Who here has a flat, anybody have a flat foot here? I have a flat foot. I don't, but my husband has to Your husband has flat foot? Yes. Yeah. So as a foot goes flat, this spring ligament can stretch. That, that may be one uh, cause of it. <laughs> and then on the outside, we have an anterior talofibular ligament, which is, I think, the most common one sprained, especially if the ankle's plantar flexed. And then the CFL, which doesn't stand for Canadian Football League, but calcaneal fibular ligament, which is sprained if the foot is uh, more dorsiflexed, and it's, it's a stronger ligament. And then there's the syndesmosis. Uh, and the strongest ligament of syndesmosis is the posterior tib fib ligament, posteriorly, and then the anterior tib fib, li tib -fib ligament, and then the interosseous ligament. And I, personally, I'm not a foot and ankle surgeon, but my threshold for fixing posterior malleolar fractures have decreased just because I think it's a freebie, sort of. What, what, uh, what do you guys do, uh, Doug and uh, Ed? Posterior malleolar fragments? Only if it's big. Only if it's big, yeah. 25%. Well, I think I can really grab it with a screw. Or if if I can a, get it, I'll do it, but it's got to be big. Oh, well, how big? 25%. More than 25%. So that's very big. How about you, Doug? That's a standard criteria. Sorry. But I don't go any right because it goes back in decent alignment. It should be okay without it. Right. It's funny when you when you do a lag screw of the lateral malleolus and you're doing an oblique lag screw anterior posterior, and I usually it looks like I usually take down the anterior tail tip fib ligament to get that screw in. Take a look at where that is and where you scrape where you subperiosteal dissect right there to put that. But screw to fix in. a fibula. It's right there. That's where you usually put your screw head. To, to do your first screw when you fix a fibula. Is yeah. Down that area or it's right torn. There. Yeah, but most of the time I'm cutting it with a knife right there. Isn't, isn't that true? Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. So you do rely on the poster one because that one you, you do cut a little that's, bit. That's my point. If it's And if there's a fracture there, it may be yanked off and may be connected to that fracture. So by putting a screw there, it decreases the chances that the syndesmosis goes bad post op or reduces your syndesmosis. You know what I'm talking but just fixing He's the fibula. Not, I know, I know, you're talking the, anterior, I know, you're talking fixing the syndesmosis. I agree, I'm talking anterior. Well, posteriorly too, if you strip, if well, nobody puts posterior plates, but okay. Yeah. So how common are ankle sprains? First of all, how, how many uh, people live in Hartford County? Anybody know? I looked it up. 250,000 people. Wow. Compared to Baltimore City, which is like uh, 700,000, something like that, and the um, county's 800,000. A lot more people in the county now. So 250,000 people, so every day <clears throat> for 10,000 people, there's an ankle sprain. So if you do the math, that's what, 25 ankle sprains a day in Hartford County, Megan. That's a lot. I should be seeing more of them. Huh? I should be seeing more of them. <laughs> they probably go to Hartford. Some of them are in Abingdon. It's wild up there. You know, there's a wild west up there. Aberdeen, <laughs> Abingdon. <clears throat> it's usually lateral. And 40% have chronic problems sometimes. So. When they come, um, when they come in the office, 
<clears throat> I always palpate laterally and medially over the ligaments. <clears throat> um, check the ATFL, CFL, posteriorly, a neurological exam. Sometimes I do a drawer test. Um, I never do a tailored tilt test. And the other thing is a squeeze test. Use a squeeze test where you squeeze both tibia and fibula to see if the syndesmosis is, is involved. Does anybody have any comments on that or any add to that? You just do it higher, though. You huh? Don't do you don't do it at the ankle, though. You're supposed to do it higher, like mid calf. Mid calf. And you see if it reproduces ankle. Hmm. Okay. I've never. I didn't even know what the squeeze test was you until I did this. A lot of times, I'll do a. I'll palpate the proximal fibula because then I'm going to look for it. <laughs> Maze of news. If it hurts up there, then I'm going to look more for that and go back down. Okay. Um, so the most common mechanism is a plantar flexion and inversion, which usually tears the uh, ATFL, but you can also uh, injure your syndesmosis and other things. So on the, on the AP x-ray, the clear space here should be less than five millimeters, and the overlap should be greater than 10 millimeters. So if they're splayed apart, it means you may have a syndesmosis injury. The talocrural angle, should be um, 83 degrees. Sometimes with a fracture, the fibula rides up. So How many of your x-rays from the emergency room, can you read like that because they're properly taken? 30%? Uh, in fractures? No, just when they come in with the sprain. I mean, I, you have to do over half of them. I used to go crazy over it. Now I get, I just get CAT scan. Just I was like, throw me the CAT scan. <laughs> I was like, I just can't deal with it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So stress radiographs, the talus should not tilt, and if it tilts, you may have a lateral ligamentous injury. Does anybody do this test? Does anybody do a stress test? <laughs> yeah, it would really hurt, yeah. And a stress test anteriorly uh, would, would prove that the anterior talofibular ligament is uh, incompetent. But I think this is more for like chronic problems than like acute problems. This is when you're thinking about fixing it. If you want to get a brostrum. Foot and ankle guys are doing this. Right, right, foot and ankle people do this. So what do you miss with ankle sprains? It could be an osteochondral defect of the talus like this, a Liz Frank injury, a fracture of the fifth metatarsal like a Jones fracture, anterior process of the calcaneus, lateral process of the talus, a perineal injury or Achilles injury. So here's a uh, lateral process of the talus fracture which is a snowboarder's injury. And I would, I would assume you need a cast scan for this. So, you could see it you can, well, you can up on that film, don't you? Yeah, you can see it there. That's not something I usually look for. So, what do you do with ankle sprains, Megan? Um, proprioceptive training. Um, How do you do that? Um, standing, balance activities, eyes closed, eyes open, different surfaces, uh, wobble board, uh, trampoline, throwing at the trampoline. Um, lateral shuffles as they get a little bit stronger, eversion strengthening of the TheraBand, multi-angle isometrics with eyes closed to try and kind of work back kinesthetic stents. Walk backwards? Occasionally. Yeah. I, I have a question. When can you start this kind of training? Like, how strong, like, does it depend on the rate of sprain and does it depend on time after sprain? You know what I mean? Which are you talking about? The band? No, yeah. just all the stuff. Band, the boogie like, board? When can we do all, when can you do this stuff as far as tolerance? Usually when their pain is kind of a little bit lower. Okay. I kind of let pain be their guide. Like right. two weeks? What's it normal? Two weeks? Three weeks? Two, three, sometimes four, depending on. So us sending a therapy right after an ankle sprain, you don't really have to jump right on it. 